big part of Trump's success came from boosting his support among particular demographic groups that traditionally lent Democrat. Take, for example, the Latin vote. Now, despite his anti-immigrant rhetoric, Trump's support amongst Hispanic voters went up since the last election. Now, you can see there in the red columns, it went up from 35% to 42%. He also increased his support among black voters, while the vast majority still backed Kamala Harris, which you can see there, huge numbers in the blue columns. Trump's share of the vote doubled to 16%, which in a state like Georgia, where a third of the voters are African-American, may have been crucial. There was a big change among young voters as well. 36% of 18 to 29-year-olds backed Trump in 2020. That grew to 46% this time around. And that's primarily thanks to young males who flocked to Trump in large numbers. And despite all the talk about the gender divide this election, Trump's support among white women actually increased by a percent to 53%. So why couldn't Kamala Harris keep the support that Democrats have counted on for years? Mitch McCann reports from Michigan. On the lawns of Howard University, crowds gathered today for the speech that Kamala Harris hoped she'd never have to give. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for. It was a very different scene last night when the same crowds arrived for what they thought was going to be a party, a celebration for the woman who had finally shattered what felt like an unbreakable glass ceiling. And that's how it started anyway. But there were worries from the outset. Do you still have hope? Of course. Love and prayer. This must be tied to the new expectations. It's not right now, thank you. And when Donald Trump started pushing ahead and Pennsylvania swung red, the gloom descended and the fear spread on people's faces. Saddened that I live in a country that would back a president that incited violence in this nation and has really disrupted the humanity that most of us believe in. And within hours, the stage where Democrats had hoped to see their president-elect was empty. That was until today, and on the lawn of the university where the sitting vice president was a student nearly four decades ago, the mood was miserable. I'm in shock. Uh, I'm heartbroken. Uh, I'm a little bit confused. And after Harris conceded victory to Donald Trump, she addressed the crowd. While I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. Putting into words what everyone there was feeling. Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> But we must accept the results of this election. But that acceptance won't come easy. It's going to be a tough time for this country, for women in particular, for people of color, for LGBTQ folks, for immigrants. We say we are the United States of America, but do we have a president who is truly committed to uniting us in message, in policy, and in act? And I don't know that that's Donald Trump. As Kamala Harris gets set for her final months as the vice president, questions are now being asked about where it went so wrong for the Democrats. She fundraised over a billion dollars and drew enormous crowds across the country to hear her speak. But in the end, Harris suffered an overwhelming loss. More than 70 million Americans chose Donald Trump instead. Including many voters Democrats assumed would vote blue. I'm just very interested to see how this is just going to play out for me. Um, just the next 60 days to see if relationships um, will dissolve because um, now that, you know, I'm really being honest about, you know, my real stance, I did not vote for Kamala Harris. I would have never voted for Kamala Harris for president. And while more than 68 million did vote for her, it still wasn't enough. That historic, elusive, glass ceiling shattering win, now at the very least, another four years away.